Well, thanks so much for having me back. It was great talking to you yesterday. I also had the opportunity to talk to a few members of your team. So thanks for giving them the time to kind of talk with me. One of the things I wanted to do in this very short 20 minutes is just review what I heard from them, re review what I heard from you, um, talk about the solution that you're trying to stand up and how we think MuleSoft uh, can help you, but both in the short term, but also think through what the future state can look like, not just with your current initiative, but um, you know, further down the road, how MuleSoft can kind of you know, start here small with you and then grow and expand. Uh, so if that looks good and we can talk through some of those things, then we can plan out next steps and think, you know, what the next meeting looks like. So oh, sound good. okay? All right, good. great. Uh, so just starting off, we talked about how Acme, right? Uh, you're looking at creating a couple of different projects right now. So I'm just going to start right here with projects, right? One of which is the unified customer view. Right? You want your customers to have a unified view of all of their data across all of their different accounts and silos. Uh, and you want them to be able to um, you know, do that. We, we call that at uh, Salesforce and MuleSoft like a customer 360. So I'll call it a 360. Okay. Um, but the way that you want to start surfacing that to your customers is through this mobile application, right? Uh, a lot of your um, a lot of your competitors have been doing this for a while and, uh, you know, they, they've had, they, some of them have had kind of first mover advantage in this, which is great. And we want to, you know, try and get there as well, but also uh, maybe leapfrog over them with that. But the first step is going to be creating this mobile app with the customer 360 view. Um, the, the time frame that you have to work in this is very short, right? This is, can you confirm, I, I think you said it was six weeks, is that right? Yeah, I like six weeks. Okay. Well, you know, that, that for, from my understanding, that's coming, you know, directly from your CEO. So it's, it's probably not too terribly negotiable, but, uh, you know, short amount of time. And so, you know, one of the things as I was thinking through the methods that you, uh, that you and your teams want to try and leverage with this approach, um, you know, those methods kind of take four different forms. And I think the first one is, is pretty obvious, right? It's, it's speed. You've got to get this up to market fast. You're already losing market share. Uh, you know, your customers are already kind of have been jumping to your competitors for a while. And, um, you know, so getting this to market and improving the customer experience and hopefully getting some customer loyalty built in there, right? So it's going to take speed. It's going to take, uh, you're a financial institution, right? So no matter whether they're using uh, checking and savings, they're using retirement, loan, uh, mortgages and lending, whether they are, uh, you know, opening a new line of credit, security is going to be number one for your organization. And that's why we're talking about the API gateway solution, uh, you know, for the mobile app. Uh, I think since you're opening this up to 67 million customers, uh, scale is clearly going to be a major factor in this app and in this 360. Um, and you know, your team and you told me about what's coming on the back of this uh, initiative to get this customer 360, which are things like your mainframe modernization effort. You're thinking about a, uh, a web portal as well, an internal app that you want to build for your sales, re your 15,000 sales reps, um, and also leveraging machine learning and AI kind of down the road in order to build uh, recommendation engines inside of your app in 360 so that a uh, customer in one line of business can get recommendations at the right time for, you know, they're doing checking and savings, maybe they get recommendations for retirement and et cetera, and, and building the lifetime value of that customer. So I think I, I'm going to call that innovation for lack of a better word, because I, I think that's something that we want to try and build into this process. And, and MuleSoft is, is going to be very good at that. So those, those are the methods that I saw and heard you talk about. Are there any other kind of methods or, or considerations before I, against the, the architecture. No, from, from my point of view, that's a, a, maybe a superset list of things. The most important thing to me is, I, I guess under the methods you've listed would be speed. I really have to get this mobile app out, you know, right. within the time frame I've been given. That's right. the so, most important thing to me. So we're gonna, we're gonna put that mobile app right up at the very top since it is the, the most critical. Um, and, you know, the API gateway will, will address as, you know, the uh, potential pass through in a second, 
But I, I just, I also wanted to take a second down here um, and just list through what I know and what I've gathered about your systems of record, right? So SAP, um, actually, I'm going to draw that a little higher here. SAP as your, uh, you know, customer records and, and enterprise resource, uh, you know, ERP, as it were. And you've got your mainframe uh, down here, and you also have your, um, you know, third party systems doing your, uh, right, mainframe, of course, holding all of your financial data um, and the third party systems holding uh, all of your uh, identity verification, phone verification, and stuff like that. So very important systems. And right now the ESB is what is connected and tying them together on premise, right? Kind of like behind your firewall. Correct. So, oh, go ahead. I said correct. Yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. All right. Um, then kind of, you know, moving towards the cloud over here on the left-hand side, um, you've got salesforce.com, which thank you for your business. And that's going to be your single source of truth for all of your customer records, which is a great way to go. Got Axiom, which is doing your customer demographic data. And then you have Stripe handling your transactions, right? Uh, so those are your cloud systems. You're talking about putting in uh, Office 365 and Microsoft Cloud, like kind of on the back end. We'll, we'll talk about that momentarily. Um, but one of the things that, uh, you know, some of your developers told me about was this custom app. And there was a little bit, this was built as a way to kind of help try and surface from all of your cloud applications to kind of surface that data in a customer 360 type way. But nobody seems to want to really use it or talk about it. I'm, I'm wondering if you can help elucidate what the problem is with it. Well, I don't know there's a problem with it, so to speak. Um, you know, it's just a bunch of custom code, Java code that, uh, you know, one of the SIs got an army of people that built and, and they own the, the maintenance of it going forward. Um, Are those, uh, and, and, and what's the relationship like with those SIs? Is it, is it a good relationship? Is it, you know, kind of a, a big cost center for you? Yeah, you know, good, fast, cheap, pick any two, and we get one maybe. Uh, so it, it could be better quality, could be quicker in return when we have a change to make. But yeah, to be clear, that's, we're not, Salesforce is not tied into the custom code. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, it's not even, uh, so that, that that's kind of another, some of your developers said that, uh, you know, they, they weren't able to use Salesforce to tie into the custom app, which is even a, a little a little less convenient. Yeah. But uh, so, uh, you know, th the truth is, I, I'm, I'm not sure I want to use it for the purposes of doing our, our architecture, um, you know, diagram right now, just because it, it seems a, a little controversial. And, um, you know, for the purposes of, of what we want to build with the API gateway, I'm oh, sorry, I'm just going to go back to black here for a sec. For the purposes of building this API gateway, right? And this is something, by the way, that um, MuleSoft does par excellence, right? We're, we're kind of best of breed in creating that, that um, you know, secure uh, place where all of the data can come from places like your ESB or from any of your cloud sources um, directly in. And, you know, where, so it can be securitized and tokenized. Um, and uh, so, so this is definitely something that I think from an architectural standpoint, we could be stood up in that six week time frame. Is it is this so if you can remind me, this this is kind of along the lines of the architecture that you were thinking of deploying. Yeah, that's what I believe we're gonna have to do in order to meet the time frames. Right. And and so from a resource standpoint, right, each of these are point to point custom code connectors. You feel like your team, you feel confident that your team can build those, maintain them, like establish governance over the, you know, kind of the I'm not break fix. Sure we can do that at all. That's what I'm worried about. Okay. All right. Well, good because uh, your your team kind of reflected that a little bit. I, I wanted to hear it from you. Um, another thing that they reflected, which kind of w when I looked at this uh, architecture, that made me a little bit nervous. Remember, I, we, you know, we've talked about the mainframe modernization, right? This has all of your financial data, um, and the trepidation I heard around the custom app. I started getting really nervous when um, they talked about like if if they're going to modernize the mainframe and then start. Um, you know, pulling data from more than one line of business out of the mainframe into the mobile app. Um, you know, the problem is exactly what you have with that custom app. You're going to need to build another custom app. So if 
you know, you start your mobile app pulling uh, checking and savings data from the mainframe, you have to build another custom app if you want to, uh, you know, have retirement planning data coming off the mainframe into the ESB. I mean, you'd think the ESB could orchestrate it, but it really can't kind of tailor the data that the mobile app needs coming straight out of the mainframe. So unfortunately, yeah, we, we, we have we have a lot of experience. I have a lot of faith in that days. IBM ESB. That's my baby, man. That's that's my bread and butter. I think it can get the data we need from the mainframe. Uh, it, it can, but it's going to create a lot of a lot more custom code, right? You can do it, but you're going to have to build that custom app again. You'll probably have to get an SI to do it. I, I, I presume because that's how you did it with the first custom app. That's going to have to go in and get data from all of these different systems of record and connect up through the gateway itself, okay. right? Got, and that's, you're, that, you're at nine minutes now, by the way. Right, right. So, um, you know, retirement planning, that's one. If you start adding in additional, right, like, uh, you know, lending services, again, you're going to have something that does not really resemble what I think you want it to resemble, right? Um, also, so that that's 14 new connectors uh, just for two new services that you want to surface inside of that mobile application. Never mind if you start building in um, other cloud services like AI or that Office 365, right? Again, you're going to have, you're going to have to connect O365 to all of these different systems and, of course, back to the gateway. So does this seem like a sustainable architecture to you like with yeah, I, I get the problems i understand what you're trying to point out um keep in mind that i got to get that gateway out i got to get the mobile app out and then i'll have to worry about the rest later right i i understand um i i frankly think there's there you know there's a better way to do it um because just looking at this from a speed standpoint maybe you get speed because the gateway is pre-packaged and it's, it's got that security and your team, they might be talented, um, but we don't even know if they have the, the capability of building all these custom connectors, but this is a security government uh, issue, I think, all these point-to-point -point custom connectors. So you're not getting security. I really, just looking at this makes me nervous about how it would scale. And it, it doesn't seem like it's really moving the needle forward for any of your new initiatives. So I would say you're sacrificing security scale and innovation for you know maybe a little bit of speed, and what, what I wanted to talk to you about was, um, you know, how we might do this a better way. Okay. Um, and and w which is not, again, not to say that we don't want the mobile application because we do. Um, and, you know, we're, I'm, I'm just aggravated with this mobile app, so I'm, I'm going to remove it completely. Oops. I have to draw on the correct layer. So let's, this is, let's say that this, go back from the beginning and this is your architecture, right? And And by the way, I bring this to your attention because uh, a, a customer, you know, one of your main competitors, Bank of America, um, you know, came to us about a year and a half ago with the same kind of request, same kind of issue. They wanted a, you know, customer 360 experience to be surfaced. Um, and they started going down the path of the API gateway. And they found that from a tactical standpoint, it was good, but uh, they were really missing a few uh, core components. And it started to build up this technical debt and the security government's uh, problem. Um, and so we led them down a different approach. And when the pandemic hit and the SBA, um, you know, there was the CARES Act and the SBA needed lenders to stand up application processes online or, or on mobile. Um, you know, Bank of America, because they had uh, gone with a kind of a, a more less of an API management approach and more of an API led architecture approach that I'm about to show you. They had a lot of reusable components that they had built that they could uh, use to stand up a mobile SBA loan application portal in 48 hours. They did it like that. And they pretty quickly became the number one lender for the SBA CARES Act loans. Um, and they were able to process something like 267,000 loans all in real time as they were coming in after that 48 hours. So um, really impressive. I know you want to be able to move fast. So the way that we architected for them and, and the way I think we can do for you is through this kind of layered uh, tiered system. And the first, the first way we talk about this. Five minutes. 
Oh, right, yep. So the first way that we think about this is creating what's called a system layer, right? And the system layer is going to be composed of these uh, reusable APIs that pull data directly from each of your systems of record, right? And the great thing about these APIs is they provide a level of abstraction. So they are um, you know, going to be pulling that data out. And when your system architects and when line of business are going to be using the data, they don't necessarily need to be able to speak the language of SAP or of your mainframe. All they need to do is have this system layer API with that data that's been exposed from uh, all of those native systems. The good news about these system level APIs is that the AnyPoint Exchange, which MuleSoft brokers, has over 200 of the most common connectors to any of these systems of record ready to go. So you just swap them in, you plug and play, uh, and that data can be exposed from those systems in, in an agnostic way. Then you have the line of business working on what's called the process layer. So these are APIs that are not built by uh, the system architects in central IT. These are built by the people who actually understand the processes that they want to build for your customers. So, you know, one example would be just a, a very simple customer API that has data coming from SAP and from your mainframe. It has it coming from Salesforce, coming from Axiom, right? You've got this customer API that describes a customer process. Then if you wanted to build, um, you know, retirement planning, you wanted to build, um, you know, checking and savings, any of these other types of processes, you don't have to go back into the system layer. You can take it straight from the customer record. These are all composable, they're reusable, and you're building the kind of architecture. Maybe you have like a, a transaction API that's taken from the customer API and also directly from Stripe. But as you can see, each layer is reusable. Each API is self-contained and, um, yeah, and, and also secure, right? You've got security not only at the top layer at the API gateway, but each one of these has a security contract. Then you can, so your central IT and your line of business uh, developers can be working in parallel. They don't have to be, you know, uh, line of business doesn't have to be work, waiting for the system level IT engineers to finish making the connectors before they start building their process APIs. And similarly, the experience levels, those mobile developers and mobile designers that you have, they can start working on mobile APIs, web APIs, right? If uh, you're doing checking and savings, there can be a camera API to document the checks that people are depositing, right? If you want to find a branch, a GPS level API, all these different uh, uh, APIs can be connected to the process. So the customer can connect to all of these in a 360. So now that you have that mobile application, right, this, you can be bringing data from all of these different process APIs and connect it directly to the mobile app. I like this because A, it's fast. You have those pre-built connectors. It's secure because security is built into every single one of these APIs as part of the original contract. It scales because as you build your web app and your internal sales app and all of the other applications, you can be drawing from all of these and reusing from all of the APIs that you built. You only before. got a minute left. Yep. Uh, so we've got scale. In other words, we scale up and we can reuse and we can be much more faster. And when it comes to innovating all across the different apps and services that you want to expose, uh, you've got a completely composable enterprise with this API led innovation. So I want to propose that for our next steps, Bill, um, you know, if this looks good to you, we can schedule some time with my SE to talk to your architects to see, right, right, does this look like the kind of thing that, that scales a little bit better to you? Yeah, certainly does. So I would say, let's bring in my SE, you know, we can talk to your architects and just schedule a 90 minute, two hour conversation. But I also think that your CIO should um, join in the conversation around what the value of a solution like this would really mean for your organization as you scale up your developer talent 
and as you try and provide the next generation of customer experience. All right, cool. I'm going to call it that you got like a tenth of a second left. All right. <laughs> um, all right, well done. So first, before we start doing feedback, let me do this. Oh, well. <laughs> that was really good. Really, really.